heard Satan fell like lightning And I've seen darkness run for cover Oh Lord! But the miracle that I just can't get over Is my name is registered in heaven Thank you Lord! See, I believe in signs and wonders Thank you God! And I have resurrection power but still the miracle that I just can't get over Is my name is registered in heaven Thank you, Lord And my praise belongs to you forever You see, Lord, this is my testimony From death to life Cause grace rewrote my story And I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. Come together now. So come together, sons and daughters. We're bought with blood and washed in water. We'll sing the praise. Sing the praises of our Savior and our Father. Our God will finish what He started. Thank you, Lord. Yes, our God will finish what He started. This is my testimony from death to life. This grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. It's by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Amen. There's greater things are still to come, Lord. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. I believe it. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. God, if I'm not dead, you're not dead. You're not dead, Lord. Greater things are still to come. One more time. I believe. If I'm not dead, still to come. Oh, I believe. Lord, this is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. Yeah. It's by Jesus Christ the righteous that I'm justified. This is my testimony. Oh, I'm alive. This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story So I'll testify It's by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony God, we can connect with that testimony with the people of God here tonight. Thank you, Lord. out to me your grace has made a way to you thank you lord has made a way to you your your word it lives inside of me and your truth is life to all who hear god is life to all who hear we live we live for you live your truth
life is over now. No power to stand against your name. The power of your name. You want to use us, God. Help us, Lord. And in faith, we will rise to be your hands and feet to all the earth. God, Lord, life to all the earth. We live, we live for you. Live your truth. your heart, serve your heart, and let salvation flow as your people pray, though we long for more, long for more, clapping's a sign of freedom, let's clap, may your kingdom come, and your will be done, as we serve your heart, Serve your heart and let salvation flow as your people pray. Lord, we long for more. We do long for more. One more time. Lord, may your kingdom come and your will be done as we serve your heart. Serve your heart. It's our prayer, God. Let's out. Let's salvation. it is in heaven. Jesus, we know that sometimes we are the window that allows your presence into a situation, maybe the door that allows you in, Lord God. So right now, Lord Jesus, praying with the saints of God, I pray that Here we go. The greatest day in history. Yeah. Death is beaten. You have rescued me. Sing it out. Jesus. The empty cross, the empty grave. Life. Life eternal, you have a wonder day. Shout it out! Yeah, he's alive. Sing oh, happy day, happy day. Wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. At last, meeting face to face. I am yours, and Jesus, you are mine. Yeah. Endless joy, endless joy, perfect peace, earthly, earthly pain finally will cease. I'll celebrate. Jesus is alive. Say it all. He's alive. Say it all. History. Death is beating, you have rescued me. Shout it out. Thank you, Lord. The empty cross, the empty grave. Life, life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out. Jesus. You said he's alive.
glorious way that you have saved me and we say oh what a glorious day what a glorious name Jesus said oh and we said oh happy day happy day you wash my sin away oh happy day happy day His perfect and blameless life It was given a sacrifice And see him there All in the name of love Broken yet glorious All for the sake of us oh, This is Jesus In his glory King of his Mercy so undeserved, it's freedom I should not know. But all my sin, all of my hidden shame, it died with him on the cross. Eternity won for us. And this is Jesus in his glory. He's the king of heaven. Is this for me? Greater love and no one than this. Oh, oh such love, such love, such love. Is this for me? One more time, such love, oh, such love, oh, such love. In his glory, King of heaven, he died. He died for me, now it is finished. 
Jesus. I'm thankful, God, for that sacrifice. It cannot be taken away, Jesus. Well, I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. It was men's empty praise and treasures that fade. They're never enough. I found that to be true, Lord. Then you came along. Hallelujah. You put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. No, there's nothing better than you. No, there's nothing. God, nothing is better than you. But I'm not afraid oh. to show you my weakness. Hallelujah. My failures and flaws, God, you've seen them all. You still call me friend. Thank you, Lord. Because the God of the mountain is still God of the valley. Oh, yeah. And there's not a place, Lord, your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing oh, better than you. Lord, there's nothing. God. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. God, nothing is better than you. You turn more. To dancing, yeah. You did beauty for ashes. You turned shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn mourning to dancing, yeah. You give beauty for ashes. Thank you, Lord. You turned shame into glory. You're the tonight, God. I was trying to worship my way there, Jesus. I praised you for what you did at Calvary, God. Thankful for that song, Lord Jesus, talking about how certain things are finished. There's nothing anybody can do to change that. But that's easy to talk to you about, Lord. It's easy to talk about victory. It's easy to talk about things you've done, Lord Jesus. But to talk about who you are, 
maybe to get to a place, Jesus, where I say, if you never do another thing for me, you've already done enough. To say, God, it's just a, a gift just to be in your presence, Lord Jesus. It's a gift, Lord, just for you to know that I exist, God. To think that you fearfully and wonderfully knit me together in my mother's womb. That I was never, and I'm not ever going to be an accident, Lord. That all my faults and failures, my talents, my successes, Lord Jesus, the times that I failed and struggled, Lord, you're always so important to creating the person that I needed to be, God. And you'll use me just the way that I am, right where I'm at. Before I hear this preaching, Jesus, I want to have the right mindset and attitude. It's not about what you've done for me anymore. I just want to talk about who you are, how valuable you are to me, Lord Jesus. You give life. You are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. No. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath and our love, so we pour. Jesus, the great physician, begin to move through this congregation right now. 
God, if there are people who are confused, the Bible says you are not the author of confusion. Bring, begin to bring some clarity into this place, Lord, so we can enter a time when your word's supposed to come forward with both feet firmly on the ground, knowing who we are, knowing what our Lord wants us to do. Jesus, if there's pain in this place, Lord, some people might need to walk through this service with a little bit of a limp like we talked about last week. But God, if there's something you can do to help somebody receive this word with that readiness of mind, Lord Jesus, oh, we want these scriptures to come forward to minister to us, Jesus. Let nothing be standing between us and your word coming to pass in our hearts and our minds. Blessing us, Jesus. You knew what we needed before we even got here. You talked to a man of God. said, show the church something. They need it this week. So God, move in power. Let that word do what only the word can do. Help this spirit right now to help it to come alive in our hearts and minds. Oh, Jesus, we're just knowing our hearts and our minds. Our church service is open to you right now. Say, let you have your way. like to sing great are you Lord sometimes don't know what else to say great are you Lord just let my heart sing it Lord great are you Lord God, you're worthy of our praise today. Lord, here in this place, God, I'm just thankful, Lord, that we could, just, we could honor your word. We could give you honor, Lord. Do just what your Bible said, God. You said that you inhabit the praises of your people. Your psalmist wrote that we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. Jesus, we do all of this so that, that one and all, everybody in this place, everybody within earshot, has an opportunity, Lord, I believe, to, to receive what you brought, God. God, we could, we could have a meeting, we could gather together, and we could share in music, and it's just a concert, God. We could, we could get together in a place and be in, in all kinds of agreement on all manner of things, and it's just an event. But God, when you get two or three of us gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ with one mind, one desire, God, and that's to, that's to put you on your throne, in the throne room of our hearts, God. When we gather together with that kind of unity, Lord Jesus, there is no limit to your power. There is no limit to your imagination. There is nothing too great for you, Lord God. You're a miracle-working God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You, Lord Jesus, are in this place today, God, and it's my expectation 
that maybe even despite what I say, God, you're going to do something for somebody's life. You're going to say something. You're going to touch somebody in their emotional life, Lord. You're going to speak something to somebody that changes the path of their future. You're going to heal somebody in their body, in their mind, Lord God Almighty. You said it in your word, God. It is true, Lord. I believe today, Lord, as we get into the rest of this service time, because we've honored your word, because we've done what you've asked, God. We prayed, Lord Jesus. We humbled ourselves. We seek your face, God. We're turning from our wicked ways, God. You promised that you'd hear from heaven, that you'd heal our land. God, you're going to do something special in this place, God. It's my prayer as we turn in the, in the Bible, Lord, together and we open these books, God. It's my prayer that you would take this meeting and that you'd transform it, God, into something that only you could do. Bless our offering of praise. Bless our offering of study and prayer. Bless what we come to give, God, and do a miracle with it tonight in the name of Jesus. Turn in your Bible, if you would, with me to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, we're going to read verse 11 and 12. I want to talk about fixing a hearing problem. Feel free to mentally insert your jokes here. You know, I think I, we had a brother in church one time, pastor, he... He, he'd been in a horrible car accident, and his hearing was all messed up, but it seemed to move from one ear to the other, depending on who he was talking to. He, speaking to my good ear, we never could tell. I, to this day, don't know which good ear was actually the good ear on that, brother. That's not necessarily the hearing problem I'm hoping we can work on tonight. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to stand in this pulpit once again. It's an honor to be here at the mission. It's an honor to to minister with you. I'm honored to follow up after Sister Griggs. I don't think I can think of too many more people in this church or in many churches who work as hard as she does at the things of God. She's a student. She studies. She submits to authority. She accepts advice and counsel from people. Sometimes she doesn't need to and she still will accept it. And she works hard at caring for the people that are a part of the church that she goes to. I am honored to follow after a ministry like that today. 1 Kings 19, 11 and 12. Then he said, go out and stand in the mountain, on the mountain before the Lord, excuse me. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. You could be seated. We prayed and we shouted and we praised our God together. I think there are some young people here who are really seeking after the Lord, maybe want to receive the Holy Spirit, like the Bible says. So I'm going to keep an eye on the clock, and I'm going to keep an eye on the room. I'm going to try to read the room as well, but I think we got some work to do tonight. So if you have all your life figured out, and you're good to go, don't tune me out, because I'm going to need your help to help the rest of us, including me. We're going to try to fix a hearing problem here today. Our text opens with the prophet of God getting some instructions from the Lord. This prophet we read about in these two verses, his name was Elijah. Maybe you're familiar with this guy. Maybe you've been reading the bread. Um, Elijah was just used in previous if you rewind the clock before these verses we read, he just did some crazy cool stuff on behalf of the Lord. And he went and basically beat up a whole mess of false prophets. And he riled up a king and his queen or whatever she was and made them all mad. And she threatens his life. She basically promises that he's a dead man for what he just did in the name of the Lord. And he hears that news, Elijah does, and he goes and he goes and talks to the Lord and he says, 
you might as well kill me now. I'm no better than my father's. It's over. I'm done. And God meets that guy there to fix what I want to call tonight his hearing problem. And that's where we picked up. We picked up with him getting the prescription that God gave him. And he marches off. And the Bible tells us for 40 days he walked in the wilderness before. That sounds like a familiar number. And he wandered a long ways and he came to this cave. And that's the setting for the Lord to show up. I don't think, I'm, I'm trying to be careful how I start this today. So if I start off a little slow, forgive me. I like to yell and get riled up and just really go after it and stuff. But I want you to hear what I'm saying. We beat up on the people in the Bible a lot. When they goof, we just all gather around and hit them while they're down. You know, that's, We love to do that because we mess up too. We fall short. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so it's nice when we can all line up in church and take turns kicking the prophet for having a little bit of faith in the moment. And we could talk about Elijah and we could look at him and say, what a weenie. We didn't read that part. I skipped past it. What a weenie. This is the man of God. Miracles. Wondrous things have already happened in his ministry. And he's, he's crying, boo-hoo, I'm ready to die because that mean old woman didn't like it and now she's threatening me. And we could all just line up and take turns kicking him in the seat of the pants because, man, what a failure in that moment. But I want to tell you something. At his lowest point, when he was ready to throw in the towel, I'm done. The match is over. You might as well take me home now. I'm not any more good for the kingdom of God. I've done everything there is to do. Take me now. At his lowest moment, he could still listen to God. And so while I want to talk about fixing a hearing problem, I want to tell you, even at your lowest moment, God is speaking to you. Even at the toughest and the darkest time, God, and in fact, that's probably when you're most able to hear from Him. But I just, I don't know about you, I just know too many people, when the thing starts going haywire, they would be right next to Elijah under the broom tree. They would just be ready to throw in the, I would be ready to throw in the towel too. The thing is, is he was probably just needed what God told him to do. You see, under that broom tree when he's ready to give up, God says, hey buddy, wake up. And he wakes up and look, there's a cake on the coals. That's what that weird picture is. Somebody thought it was pizza or calzone. (laughs) Same thing. You get you get overwhelmed and you go to pastor, you go to your loved ones, you call your mom on the phone, whatever the case may be, you reach out and sometimes they give you the the advice you know they're going to give you and you don't want to hear it. And we talk about it here all the time. Here's some of the advice in this church. How's your prayer life? been reading that Bible? How is your connection with God? I was just reminded lately talking to somebody when I was very first, pastor, within the first like two weeks of me being born again. It was December 18th, 1998. I was standing or sitting. I can't tell you what my posture was because I was so freaked out in the front of our church when we were meeting down in Barrie at the Senior Citizen Nicotine Hall with the salmon-colored curtains and the ceiling this high, I was standing. She remembers because she was there. And I bet, Gary, where did you hide? I, saw, I thought I saw you earlier. There you are. You were there because you snuck up on me and you put a hand on my shoulder and I about jumped out of my pants. You asked me if I would like to pray. I prayed. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just like the Bible says. How do I know? Because I began to speak in other tongues, in language I did not know. That was me that moment. And I was so wound up and so sweaty and excited. I just got, the first person I saw was our dear sister Griggs. And I just laid a big old sweaty hug on her. I was just so happy. And then December 21st, 1998, in the Ordway's kitchen slash 
feed the teenagers room where we had Bible study, they put the horse trough, a big round plastic tub in there, and they spent hours making sure the water wasn't too cold. Thank God if you were ever baptized in halfway decent temperature water. Sorry, Helen. It was nice and warm for us that December day in that kitchen, although it was full of fuzzies from everybody's clothes. I was like, there was 10 of us got baptized that day, and I, if you're going to get baptized in Jesus' name and there's a bunch of you, go first, <laughs> if you can. But I went down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, and my sins were washed away. December 21st, I remember. And then we had what we used to call Watch Night Fellowship, December 31st, so that close to my new birth, I remember walking in the Chelsea gym place or wherever it was down there with Brother Graw. Yeah, like seven of us remember this guy. The most well-pressed, not a single hair out of place, glasses never smudged guy I've ever met and from then until this day, and he's walking next to me, doesn't know much about me, me with my shaggy hair, my B.O., my weird Jesus sandals, the whole nine yards. And there's Brother Graw. I don't know, did he sleep with a tie on? This guy was so put together, and he walking next to me on the way in to watch Night Fellowship. I'm getting somewhere, guys, believe me. Walking in there says, how are you doing with the Holy Ghost? I was 10 days old. I don't know to this day how to answer a question like that, but it was good for me to stop and think about priorities in my life, because we do that. How you doing today? Great. How you doing today? Great. How's it going? Good. Even if it's not going good, we say it's going good. Even when it's going bad, it's going good, because we're just programmed. How you doing today? But if somebody decides to pull a Brother Gras, how are you and the Holy Ghost? You're going to stop for a second and think about what's going on in your life. He wanted me to think about my hearing at the very beginning. He wanted me to be thinking about this spirit that the Lord had given me and the relationship that I have with him. He wanted me already at the very beginning to consider that this is a relationship. It's not just some crazy experience. It's not like another drug that I can add to my bag of tricks. It's not some other truth, just some other truth that I can add to my life. That this is God in me. And this is a forgiveness that is not just theoretical. My sins are actually washed away and removed from my life. Brother Graw wanted me to think about my life in those terms, realizing that this now is going to be a part of my life every day. How are you in the Holy Ghost? And I think that's how Elijah was able to hear from the Lord. Because you see, God said, hey, eat that bread. Okay, and he eats. And he goes right back to bed. And he wakes up again, and there's some more food. And God says, eat that too, because you've got a journey ahead of you. So he ate that too and took him another nap. And in the strength of those two meals and that little talk with God, he was able to walk for 40 days. I don't read anywhere in that chapter. Go to 1 Kings 19 sometime. I don't read anywhere where he got another morsel to eat. Some people think he fasted for 40 days like Moses of old and Jesus who came after. They think he spent 40 days in fasting. Just a short time after saying, God, kill me now. He said, okay, God, this is enough. And he walked in the wilderness until he met the Lord in the cave where we saw this setting. I've heard it said this way, and I don't want to come off too funny about this. But sometimes when you feel like it's all going down the toilet, when you feel like it's completely ruined and there's no turning back, sometimes you, what you need is a snack and a nap. Yeah. And it, believe it or not, that will do the trick. You ever had anybody just tell you, you know what, go to sleep. It's going to seem better in the morning. There's a real reason for that. Because when you're tired, when you're angry, when you're hungry, when you're lonely, when you put those things together, you get all kinds of messed up in your head and you're ready to throw in the towel and that's not the time to be making important decisions. But it is the time to start trying to make sure you can hear from God. If you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, you got to press pause for a second and listen to yourself for just a moment. Don't trust yourself necessarily, but listen and think about it. 
We even have a new word. It's a relatively new word. It's called hangry. Not angry, not hungry, hangry. It's in the dictionaries now. And you can do all kinds of study on this phenomenon called hangry. Now, many of you men in particular probably are going to use this as an excuse to be crabby with your loved ones. I tell you, after tonight, I hope you'll not try that one because that's no excuse. But apparently that happens. This hangry phenomenon is a real thing. Now, there's a lot of argument among doctors and scientists and stuff like that, but there's enough science behind this. There's enough experience. There's enough wisdom behind this to realize when your blood sugar dips low enough, your brain begins to starve. And when your brain begins to starve, your body starts hearing things from the brain saying, something important needs to happen here. We're running out of gas. And your brain can do so many different things. Bear with me for a moment. Your brain, in fact, can start pumping out the hormones that you create when you've been scared, including adrenaline. Your body will start to produce these anxiety things when you get hungry. You know that thing? We talk about it here in church a lot, so I won't labor it too much. Fight or flight? The same chemical response in your body from flight or, fight or flight can happen to you simply by being hangry. Amazing. But we don't listen to ourselves sometimes. And we end up in a position like Elijah where it's way worse in our minds than it really is. And you sometimes, if you're like me or like Elijah, you'll take your big old foot and you'll stick it right in your mouth. That's an idiom, pastor. You don't literally put your foot in your mouth. What it means is you open your mouth and you say something real dumb that you can't unsay. You might as well stick your foot in your mouth. These things happen when you're hangry. Your brain doesn't function the way it should. You, and then and on top of that, it starts to tell your body to go into fight or flight mode. You freeze up or you get angry. And you see, most of us, when we're in that shape, when we're around our boss or somebody that we feel we need to impress, or we're in court, or we just got pulled over by a cop, most of us, even when we're hangry, we have enough willpower to rein that in long enough to get through that situation so we don't get chucked into jail or beat up or whatever the case, or fired. But what tends to happen is we don't have the same restraint around safe people, and that's when we say hurtful things, and that's when we do dumb things because they're the safe people. And the, we're a church full of people right now. We've been around each other a long, long time, most of us. And so you know what happens in churches Yes, we can get hangry from time to time, but we get used to each other, and we realize we're safe around each other, and we begin to say things that we might not normally say because we haven't checked in with our hearing in going, God, am I supposed to talk like this to them right now? I feel like it. I might as well do it. Don't always do things based upon how you feel. Our text finds the prophet ready to say, God, kill me. He literally said, take me now, God. And he was just hangry. Rest, God said. Eat something and then come talk to me. Even God didn't finish the conversation he started until he prescribed rest and food and prayer and come and see me. I want to tell the church this is no excuse for us to have eating disorders either. Every time I'm anxious, grabbing me a cheeseburger or a donut. Every time I'm angry, stuffing another chocolate bar in my mouth. That's not what I mean either. What I mean, though, is our bodies and our minds and our spiritual selves are fully connected until the Lord comes. And, and you can read in the New Testament, there's this glorified body that's going to be ours. Corruptible must put on incorruption, meaning it will not decay, it will not suffer this hangry phenomenon. But until then, your spiritual life can be affected by your physical self, and it can be affected negatively. Paul said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I'm getting somewhere, and then maybe I'll get to the preaching part. We can get hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, and it messes with our perspective on things. I want, I'm going to say something else that 
you're going to probably go talking to the pastor about later, but I think it's pretty trendy nowadays to have mental health conditions. You can go, I could list a long list of pop stars in particular who are like, I don't know if you call it coming out or what you would for these things, but, you know, I have this and I suffer with that. We got OCD singers and bipolar singers and manic depressive singers and borderline personality singers. Some of our heroes in America today are coming out and they're, they're kind of normalizing mental health concerns. And that's okay. I think, I think we should destigmatize this. A stigma means a dirty mark. It shouldn't be shameful that we struggle with mental health things. But I think what it's begun to do is every one of us who gets a little bit hangry, now we got a mental health crisis. I work in the mental health field. I have for over seven years now. I work around psychologists, psychiatrists, crisis professionals, people who work with kids who genuinely hear voices and think they have bugs crawling under their skin. I'm around this stuff and have been around this stuff. And I've had people come to me and go, do I have this? Do I have that? I'm not an expert. I'm not. That's why I'm trying to tell you I was trying to set this one up carefully. But I want to say that's life. We all get anxious. We all struggle there sometimes. That doesn't mean you have to stay there. We all get depressed. That's not mental health. That's not illness. That's just a phenomenon. These things come to pass, one of the preachers said recently. We all have this thing. In fact, if you look at it the right way, and there is a right way to look at it, if you're anxious, that probably means you're moving your life forward. Change is scary, but change is the only way to live. If you're not growing, you are dying. And so if you're anxious about something, it probably means you're pushing back against this life. You're moving forward. You're challenging some norms. You're breaking some cycles in your life. You're saying no to things. Sometimes that leads to having some anxiety. And so if you look at it the right way, this isn't a give up kind of thing. This isn't a I'm sick kind of thing. That's just life. I've heard more than one person who actually has the letters after their name. More than one recently say, that's just life. Congratulations. One that I respect a good deal as well, he said, welcome to adulthood. Sometimes growing up stinks. I went to get in the car the other day. Just sitting down, I hurt my back. What? This is not fair. It wasn't the first time. It won't be the last. Welcome to adulthood. This life, Jesus said, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You know, depression is normal, too, not just anxiety. It could be a sign that you just learned something. I never once got a spanking and was happy about it afterwards. But I guarantee you, I probably deserved 101% of them. I lucked out of a few I should have gotten and didn't get. And you know what? My Bible says the father chastens the son or the daughter that he loves. And so every once in a while in the kingdom of God, I'm going to get a little depressy spaghetti because God's going to smack me down and he's not going to let me get back up until I learn my lesson. It's a good thing sometimes to endure the ups and the downs of this life. Fear is the fruit sometimes of confrontation. I'm just trying to oversimplify things that we all face. It's scary to say no to somebody when you've been needing to say no a long time and they've been stepping on your boundaries and they've been taking advantage of you. They've been cruel to you or unfair to you and finally you just get fed up. It's a scary thing to do that, but it's healthy. Boundaries are what relationships are built on. We think relationships are built on good feelings nowadays. Relationships are built on boundaries, on being able to say no. Makes it so much more worthwhile when I say yes. Even God himself was going to give me a chance to say no when he invited me to say yes to him. Boundaries are the foundation of relationships. Fatigue means I'm working. We have diagnosis for fatigue now in the medical world. 
that there's not a lot of science for it. It's one of these, there's a couple different ones, and I won't get into it too much, but they give you this diagnosis. You know, there's people that just, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't get it going. I just can't do it. There's multiple diagnoses out there now for tired folk. My Bible says that in the last times that he will, our adversary, the devil, will wear out. He will seek to wear out the saints of the Most High God. I think fatigue just means you're working. And if you're tired, that means you can sleep. And what did Elijah need when he was in this emotional crisis? He needed a nap, and he needed a sandwich, and he needed to go and have a good talk with God afterwards. You see, if you're tired, and I'm not, the Bible teaches on that a little bit too, a little folding of the hands, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands, and your want will come on you like an armed robber. And he was saying, don't be lazy. But you know what? If you work hard, then sleep is your reward. And the older I get, the more I appreciate a good night's sleep. And it's funny, I don't climb ladders like I used to or carry 80-pound buckets of paint like I used to or run around in 100-degree sunny days trying to stick paint on and the house is so warm it looks like it's smoking when I'm putting the paint on the side of the house. I used to sleep good those days. Nowadays, I have to like, I have to pay attention to my life and to my routines. I have to turn that stupid screen off a while before bedtime so that I can get a good night's sleep. Church, I think one of the problems in a world full of mentally unwell people is that we don't get enough or the right kind of sleep. Turn the thing off. Turn the lights off. Go to bed at a decent hour unless you work third shift, then you better stay awake. But go to bed at the right time, folks. Get up early. Have a bowl of cereal or something. Treat your body right because your brain is connected to your body. Fatigue is just the result of working hard. And if you aren't sleeping right, if you're full of anxiety and frustration, go work hard. Like find a pile of wood and stack it up. Go help somebody put shingles on the roof. Do something. Make your body tired. You'll get a good night's sleep and you will feel way better about all those things the next day. I'm trying to be practical today for once. Amen. Rest, eat, and then go talk to the Lord about it. Oh, pastor, my life's a mess. It's full of chaos and confusion. Well, there came a wind, and the wind was so strong for Elijah, it broke the rocks. It wind strong enough to break rocks, but God wasn't in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. Oh, I remember that time, Paul and Silas, they prayed, and the, the foundations of the earth were shaken, and the doors in the whole jail were opened up, but God wasn't in this earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but God wasn't in the fire, and after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was only then that this prophet covered up his noggin. He hid his face, as it were, and he went to the mouth of the cave, and God then said to him, what are you doing? Why are you here? And he was only then able to talk to the Lord about what was going on in the turmoil of his heart and his mind. It's funny that the Lord would choose fire at, right before the still, small voice because Recently, Elijah witnessed God's answer was fire, but somehow he knew, somehow he knew that God wasn't in that fire. And you can get on social media today, and there's wildfires. I, in fact, read that the, the smoke from our California slash Texas slash half the country, it seems, wildfires that the toxins have blown into Vermont, and, and, and they're probably affecting people's allergies and their health and well-being. And, and all of that. And you could just go on and you can see all these floods all over the world and earthquakes in diverse places echoing the scripture and, and wars and rumors of wars. And you can look at all of that and you can let it get into your mind and it can turn into tumult and it can make you afraid and it can wind you up and it can stress you out. But God's not in the earthquake and God's not in the fire and he's not in the noise. He's not in the sound and the fury. He is in the still 
still, small voice. And he was there because he was trying to say, Elijah, you've got to be still. It echoes what he said to the people of God when they stood on the shore of the Red Sea. Be still and know that I am God. You've got to just slow it down. And you've got to just maybe have a snack and maybe take a little nap. You've got to quiet the voice long enough in your mind and in your life just enough so that you can hear God talk to you. I, I, I thought about this. I was in a pretty low spot in my life years ago now. And I remember I could not sleep. I've told you guys this before. I could not go to bed unless I watched YouTube videos of U.S. Army nuclear tests. Don't ask me why. If you can imagine going to bed every night for almost a year watching mushroom clouds and fake buildings blow up and stuff like that. I couldn't sleep without playing a video to fill the emptiness in my bedroom at night. I couldn't sleep in my great big old bed either. I had to curl up on the couch and watch videos just to fill the empty hole. Everybody gets lonely. And I think what I wish I'd have learned quicker in those days, Pastor, was that loneliness is just there so that you will learn to love God and need God and appreciate God and reach out to God. We come to lonely places so that we are ready to hear from God. Elijah, he, at this time that he went to the cave, you see, Elijah, when he heard they were going to come kill him, he went to the land of Judah the part of the nation that still mostly served God. He ran there where he could hide from Ahab and his evil woman. And he went there and he left. It's funny, Pastor. It echoes for me some of the story we heard last week. He left his servant behind and went a little ways farther by himself. And in his loneliness under that broom tree, he was ready to give it up. You see, loneliness is normal. And loneliness comes on you. You said it a while ago. Even in a room full of people, you can get good and lonely. It's in those times the Lord is trying to speak to you with a still small voice. Turn the video off. Turn the radio off. Turn all the other distractions down and turn your ears in. God wants to fix our hearing problem. He wants us to be in a place where we can hear from him. Elijah so ready to give up, ready to say my job here is done and God was not yet buddy. I got something more for you before you're done. But Elijah wasn't ready to hear it till he had a snack, had a nap, and he went to that cave and heard the still small voice of God. I was so excited about last week's message, walking with a limp. I mean, I walked with a limp for like, seems like 18 months, I don't know, when I broke my ankle, but that wasn't why. I, had, I can have power with God like Jacob. I can have my own times of doubt and darkness, loneliness, and fear, just like Jacob, just like Elijah, I can have those times. And if I will just exert the effort to wrestle with the Lord a little bit, I can have power with God. In spite of my fear, my anger, my loneliness, in spite of my anxiety and my depression, in spite of the things that come to us all, we all struggle under these from time to time. In spite of that, I might have that limp, and it might be an invisible one. You can't see what everybody is carrying around for a burden. But God knows, and maybe he just wants you to walk with that limp. Maybe he wants me to walk with that limp. I was so excited to hear it because you know what? Some things just haven't left me. And like the Apostle Paul, I pray, God, take it away from me. Oh, God, take it away from me. Oh, God, make it go away. And it seems like he's telling me the same thing. My grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in your weakness if we're all there and I think we are let the Lord fix our hearing problem my Bible says there's no temptation that's overtaken you overtaken you except what is common to all people that's in 1 Corinthians 10 Ecclesiastes 1 tells us there is nothing new under the sun when I was younger, it was easier to have this problem, but I used to think it was nobody else going through. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. But my Bible tells me there's nothing new. We might have new names. 
We might have new diagnosis. We might have new medicines. We might have new approaches towards our wellness, our health, and our well-being in the world today. But nothing, nothing is new under the sun. And there's nothing that overtakes you or me but what is common to man. So I can actually take comfort when I hear those professionals say, that's just life. Welcome to growing up, folks. Well, that's not what I wanted to hear. I wanted everybody to roll up and just cry for me and give me a hug. Maybe throw me a parade. How, look at the struggle he's struggling with. Let's throw him a parade. And next week, we'll throw Brett a parade. And, and you know, we'll just take turns throwing each other parades for how hard it is to live this life. Martin Luther King Jr. said it. I'm going to paraphrase because I didn't memorize this. He said, if you can't fly, run. Yep. And if you can't run, walk. And if you can't walk, crawl. But whatever you do, we say it here, keep moving forward. We can walk with that limp. And if you don't feel like you can walk, you can crawl. And if God is not done, he is not done with you yet. You might want to be good and done, but God is not finished yet. He's got a plan for you, and he's got a plan for me. He wants us who wait upon the Lord to renew our strength, to mount up with wings like eagles, to run and not grow weary, to walk and not to thank God has something in store for each and every one of us. But he wants us to stop waiting for that limp to go away. He wants us to stop waiting for it to get easy to live for God. He wants us to stop hoping that whatever's going on in our noodle will just go away before we start to do it. He's talking to us under each and every one of our broom trees. He finds you where you're sitting. He finds you where you're sitting. And he's trying to say, I've got something something for you to do. I want you to take a nap and eat a sandwich and then come and meet with me. I've got something for you. Today, God wants to fix our hearing problem. He wants to get us in a place where we're ready to hear from him. God's got something in mind for you and he is not done with you. He wasn't in the fire. He wasn't in the wind. He wasn't in the earthquake. He was in a still, small voice. Your adversary, the devil, is going about, my Bible says in the book of James, First Peter, excuse me, he walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings, the same ones, are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. But our adversary is not a biting lion. He's not a clawing lion. He's not a devouring lion. He's a roaring lion looking for somebody to snack on because it's in the noise that you'll freeze and you'll hesitate. In the deep south, they learned this thing during the Civil War called the rebel yell. And it, don't believe if people tell you this. They don't, it's, they don't know what it was to this day. The last guy to do the rebel yell was a couple hundred years ago probably or somewhere close to that. Why did they bother with this rebel yell? Because when they came running out of the bushes, like a bunch of ragged, bearded, dirty, smelly, crazy looking dudes screaming at the top of their lungs, the other guy, the other side, the Union soldiers might hesitate to pull the trigger just long enough that the Confederate soldiers would get in the shot first and win the battle. That rebel yell won a lot of fights. And just like that, our enemy, the adversary, is like a roaring 
lion. It's said that the roar of a lion or a tiger, you can hear it. It's loud and it's scary. But in the human ear, you can't hear all of it. There's this vibration because of how deep it is. It's called infrasound. This sound gives you a scared eebie-jeebies feeling. They're actually finding now that that's why people think houses are haunted. What they're doing is their bodies are picking up on infrasound. They're picking up on a sound that their physical ears cannot hear, and it's spooking them out. It's weirding them out. It's making them halt. It's making them stop. The devil goes about like a roaring lion because he wants you to freeze where you are. He doesn't want you to keep moving forward. He wants you to stop wherever you're at in your progress. Maybe tonight is your night to get out of your seat and come up to an altar of prayer and have the breakthrough that you've been longing to have for a good long time. The roaring lion, he wants to make you freeze. He wants to yell. He wants to say something in your ears that'll make you pause, that will stop you. He's a roaring lion. That rebel yell got no room in your ears. You got to fix your hearing problem. You got to tune out the fire, tune out the wind. Tune out the earthquake. God is in the still small voice and he's waiting for you to just keep listening and he's calling you forward and he's saying, come on, I've got something for you. Don't let the roar of the lion freeze you. Don't let him. He's a liar. The thief did not come but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, my sheep, they hear my voice. They know me. And he said, come on to the door. He said to the the sheep. You will know my voice. You will answer. He is the answer for your hearing problem. Would you stand with me today? I'm calling you to a place of prayer. I want you to hear from God like the prophets of old. I said it last time I preached. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can talk to you like he talked to the men and the women of old. He wants to, in fact. He can move in your life. He can do miracles through you, and that is what he wants for you. He wants you to fix your hearing problem. Don't trust your feelings. Infrasound will make you feel like there's somebody watching you when there's nobody around. Infrasound will give you that goosebump flesh and it'll make you wonder what's going on. And I feel like there's something weird and I don't know what's going on. Don't listen. Don't just always trust what your body's doing. If Elijah had trusted his body, he wouldn't have made room to hear from God under that tree. He would have gave up there over there in the land of Judah. But God called him out into the wilderness and he called him into a cave and he said, Elijah, there's still... See, Elijah thought he was the only child of God left. He thought he had failed as a prophet. And God said, I've still got me 7,000 believers up here in these hills. You're not alone. In fact, when you leave this cave, Elijah, you're going to go and you're going to anoint. Now, this is wacky. Here's a study. You're going to go and anoint the king of Syria. Then you're going to go and anoint another king for the people, my people. And you're going to go and you're going to find your replacement, Elisha. You're going to anoint the three of them. And whoever the first one doesn't kill, then the second one will. And whoever the second one doesn't kill, then Elisha's going to kill. He was telling him, all the stuff you're afraid of, you're about to go and make a remedy for it right now. You're about to go and put up new kings. You're going to establish new government and rule and power. You're going to go, and there's going to be somebody to carry the torch for you. You've just got to be faithful and keep moving forward, Elijah. I'm going to have you come, and I want you to listen to the voice of God. I want you to pray, and I want you to seek his face. I want you to wrestle with the Lord, if you must, to get power, to get to the other side. If you have not been born again, like the Bible says, my Bible says, repent, therefore, every one of you. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children, to all that are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Don't let the noise of the way other people do it distract you. If it's in the Word of God, then that's the way to do it. And I can show you 
She could show you. You all could show me. It's in the word of God. You must be born again. God's calling you to live a holy lifestyle. Be holy, God said, for I am holy. Come out from among them, God said, and be separate. And I will be your God. And you will be my people. Don't let the noise, don't let the lion, don't let the thief distract you. There was a Native American and his friend walking through Times Square. Times Square, New York. Lunchtime. And this Native person heard a cricket. And his buddy's like, no way, you, you didn't hear no cricket. So much noise. Maybe you've heard this story. He said, I'll prove it to you. He crossed the street. That's no mean feat. If you've ever been there or seen it. That's not just like one of our streets. And he went over to a planter. I don't think they have many planters down there anymore. And he rummaged through and he found a cricket and he showed it to his friend. And the guy was stunned. How? You must have Superman ears. You might be looking at somebody like your pastor, like Sister Griggs, like some of the people we consider who have like gifts of the Spirit, who hear from God. You might look at them and go, they must have Superman ears. No, they just know how. And they know what to listen for. You see, the native guy, he knew he was listen, He was ignoring all the other racket. He was trying to find something of nature and so he could hear the cricket. And he said, I'll prove my point to you. And he reached into his pocket and he pulled out a hand of chains, jingle, 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 and tossed it on the sidewalk. And heads turned from like 20 yards all around. They could recognize the sound of money and he said to the man if it's important to you you'll be able to hear it I'm talking to you today at the mission and I'm saying this there is nothing more important than being able to hear from your God and I can get up here and I can sweat and I can cry and I can get beside myself crazy and tell you what the word of God says but there's nothing more important than you being able to hear the voice of God in all of that it's just a speech if you don't learn how to hear from God. What are you going to do on Monday and Tuesday when you're all alone? You've got to learn to hear from God. Would you come and pray with me today? I'm asking you, these young people, do you still want to pray for the Holy Ghost? Come and pray. Older folks, you want the Holy Ghost? Come and pray. You need to hear something from God? You want God to use you in the gift of the Spirit? Come and pray. Let's have a fix for our hearing problem. In Jesus' name. Jesus, here today in the house of the Lord, we come to a time of prayer.
chosen and I am free and I am living for eternity no I'm free now forever you pick me up turn me around you set my feet on solid ground and yours now forever oh must to hear tonight Lord oh Lord and now nothing's gonna hold me back no nothing's gonna hold me back no nothing's gonna hold me my sin and shame away the slate is clean a brand new day i'm free now forever now boldly i approach your throne to claim this crown through christ my own i'm yours now forever oh, oh, oh. now nothing's gonna hold me back no nothing's gonna hold me back no nothing's gonna hold
giver of every breath I breathe, the author of all eternity, the giver of every perfect thing, Lord, oh, you be the glory. The maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your work, the king over all the universe, to you be the glory. We sing now, I am alive. Cause I'm alive in you And it's all because of Jesus I'm alive It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ It covers me and raises dead men's life It's all because of Jesus I'm alive of heaven and of earth no one can comprehend your work the king over all the universe to you be the glory and now i am alive because i'm alive in you oh, and it's all because of jesus i'm alive hey. it's all because the blood of jesus christ It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ covers me, oh, oh. it covers me and I raise this death in life. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back. I know you are near. And I will fear no evil. For my God is with me And if my God is with me Whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? We're singing, oh no, you never let go Through the calm and through the storm Oh no, you never let go through it high and every low, no, you never let go, oh Lord, you never let go of me, Lord, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on, it's a glorious light beyond all compare, Hallelujah. and there, and there will be a man to these troubles is limping but until that day comes God will live to know you here on the earth and I will fear no evil for 
for my God is with me. And if my God is with me, tell me whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I
make it new, make it true, to make it just like you. Take these hands, gotta lift them high. Think yours, not mine, to do. Do what you will. Do what you will. Do what you will. Worship all honor, all glory, power, all power to you. All honor, all glory, power, and all power to you, Lord. Got lots of powerful things happen when your people just worship. And they just praise, Lord. Sometimes, God, I think we need to stop asking. Just enjoy your presence. We find out in your presence is fullness of joy. To your right hand, pleasures forevermore, Lord. Sometimes we just need to worship God. Sing all honor, all glory, all power to
There's salvation through the Lamb that was slain. We know there's victory through the Lamb. There's victory in the Lamb. There is victory through the Lamb that was slain for you and for me. There's victory in the Lamb. There's victory in the Lamb. There's victory in the Lamb that was slain. Let's say it now. Who is it? Sing Jesus is the Lamb. Yeah. Sing Jesus is the Lamb. Oh. Jesus is the Lamb that was slain. Oh, Jesus is the Lamb. Jesus is the Lamb. Oh, Jesus is the Lamb that was slain. You met with us here tonight, God. We're so blessed to have an understanding of what we need to do. When the church is together, the saints come together, Lord. And I'm thankful, Jesus, that when we make ourselves ready, Jesus, through praise and worship, we can open a powerful window. Oh, in your presence, Jesus. And God, you will bless us in such a powerful way with your word. So tonight, God, I pray that we will leave here remembering that sometimes that's just the way life is. That we do have to walk through life with a limb. But God, if we'll take care of ourselves the very best that we can, that God, we will be able to hear you. Lord's probably done most of what he wanted to do. People would be dispersed if they'd like. But I'm going to sing one more song just to worship for people who are just still enjoying the presence of the Lord. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. But I've heard the tender whisper of love in the day. Night as you tell me that 
you're pleased in it, I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Only you provide because you know just what we need before we even say a word. You're a good, good father. To you are, to you are, it's who you are, and I am loved by you. Lord, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into your love Wow. 